Hi guys and welcome back to another video. So as you can tell by the title of this video as well as the intro to this video that this video is an unboxing, a review, and a kind of like painting process video for you guys and it is of the Gaomon PD1560. So the people at Gaomon decided to kindly um, send me one of their tablets again for me to try out and unbox and let you guys know how I feel about um, this kind of a tablet because I am still fairly new to using these kinds of screen tablets So everything I'm gonna be saying in this video is gonna be my honest opinion and kind of an opinion from a person who's been drawing digitally for quite a while but not um, as experienced on drawing on a screen tablet so um, I just quickly unboxed everything and here you can see the tablet itself as you can see it's much larger I believe the display is 15.6 um, If I'm incorrect, you can just refer to all the specs and everything that I'm going to put on the screen As well as in the description if you have any questions You can also visit their website and check out the links below in terms of any promos or events or any kind of special deals that they do have going on at this time So as you can see in the box, it actually came with a bunch of screws in a little tiny bag, as well as the, all the necessary wires, um, the plug-in, like the power adapter, as well as the pen stand, which has the pen nibs inside, as well as the stylus that comes in the other box that you can see. Um, and what's really nice is that they also, oh, so this cord right here i was actually confused what it was for and that's when i realized that the stylus or like the pen itself like the pen itself you need to actually charge to use so it's a rechargeable pen which kind of turned me off at first but um according to the person the rep that i was talking to the pen itself on one full charge which takes about an hour and a half to charge actually can last up to a month now i'm not sure I think it would be more beneficial if they gave a certain amount of time um, for the drawing. So I think it would be more beneficial if they told you how much time it actually would last if you were to constantly draw. But so far, I never really had to charge it. It did come pre-charged, I believe, but not fully charged. So um, you can charge it when as soon as you get it. So here you can see there's the pen, the pen holder and as well as the nibs inside the charger for the pen an allen wrench for the screws four screws to attach your pen stand to the back of your tablet um and then here are the necessary wires to hook up the tablet to your computer or your laptop the power adapter a glove for your drawing hand as well as yes i think i didn't show the stand in this little section but there is a stand that comes with this tablet which is really like it's really handy because that was one gripe i had with the pd1161 um but i think it's more necessary because this tablet is much larger so as you can see i'm actually just playing with the stand because i didn't read any any instructions so i wasn't sure how the stand exactly worked but as you can see you just pull this little thing out and then you can adjust the height to whatever height is more suitable for your drawing style and for your posture so yeah i think that's really handy so like i mentioned um one thing i had problems with or not problems like very nitpicky issues with from the pd1161 was that the screen was a little bit too small for me just because I've been drawing digitally for quite a while and I've always been looking at my laptop screen. So my laptop screen, screen, laptop screen is about 15.6 inches across, I believe. And that's exactly the same width as the Gaomon um, PD1560 tablet like its screen size is the exact same. So for me, it's like, I'm not downgrading in size, but I feel like if you are starting off with using a graphics tablet or you wanna get into like a screen tablet, I do suggest getting one of the smaller models so you can test it out. It's not necessary to go bigger for drawing tablets, especially if it's not within your budget. So as you can see, um, after assembling the stand, the the Gaomon tablet also came with a kind of like a felt case. So this would help prevent your tablet from getting any like scratches or anything like 
like minor damages to it. Um, it is a flimsy case, so it won't protect it from like, you know, major falls or anything, but it definitely would help um, with some areas. So the screen itself actually comes pre installed, I guess, with a. Okay, the screen itself comes with a anti-glare screen protector on it so be careful when peeling off the first layer of plastic because you might lift off the um the screen protector like i did so i have a little bit of bubbles and dust in the top left corner it doesn't bother me but i really do like the fact that they do have a anti-glare um screen protector on which you guys are going to see in a little bit that it might be a little bit of a hindrance when filming it's just because i tend to have a light behind me so it would be hard to film I'm going to switch to real-time talking for a little bit and I'll come back to talk about the tablet a little bit more. Okay, so I have paint to the side set up. I have my glove on. My pen is still charging because I unplugged it a while back and I forgot to charge it again, but it should have enough battery life for now so I can start drawing. As you can see, I'm going to give you a little quick demo of pressure sensitivity. I do have my pressure sense- one second actually. Yeah. Okay. So I actually have my pressure sensitivity set to, I think minus two when you go into administration and you can change the bar. I changed it to minus two because that's similar to how I like to draw in here. And I'm just using my basically my sketch brush that I've been always using on paint till sigh. And that can give me a good indication of how I would like to use this particular brush because this brush I usually don't use with a whole lot of pressure, but you can see that you can get different line variations. If you use a normal pen, you can definitely get super thin lines, thicker lines. Um, yeah. So I actually think this tablet's actually really nice. I think I'll explain a little bit later in the voiceover my thoughts and opinions of this compared to the PD1161. Um, all I can tell you is that I do prefer this larger screen because it does match my screen size to my laptop, which is what I'm used to looking like what I'm used to looking at when drawing. So this is definitely going to help. So I'm actually going to go into probably full speed paint mode. I will switch back between real time footage of me painting um, and giving a little bit of an explanation as well as going back from like a speed paint to some clips of me just sped up working on the tablet itself. Now, in terms of artwork, I am actually thinking of doing something that I found in one of my old sketchbooks. So this is the Arteza sketchbook from a while back and I did this for a quick ASMR video and I kind of want to turn this one into a digital painting. Now I haven't digitally painted in pencil sci in a while so we'll see how well this goes. Okay, <laughs> so hopefully this will work. So I didn't really get to talk too much about the settings. So once you install the driver for your Gaumon tablet and if you have any previous tablets, apparently, you can use the same driver and they will work perfectly fine. I did uninstall my previous driver because I wanted to use my Wacom um, for a commission. So I had to reinstall this driver and then, yeah, everything was really smooth sailing. It was easy to set up. And the thing I wanted to talk about is if you're not familiar using the Gaumon tablet, um, you can definitely change the settings as well as map your um, express keys, which there's 10 of them on this particular tablet. So all you have to do is go onto your desktop and open up your Galmon, like the Galmon icon thing. You would have to right click it and then go into administration mode, I believe. And then once you're in administration, you will have access to a bunch of these settings. So the settings I recommend that you change is the pen pressure. So I think I have mindset, is it to negative two or is it negative four? Whatever's the most left on the tablet is what I have it set on when I was doing this particular illustration. And then when I was doing that, I decided to also map the express keys. So I have like, you know, control S, control O, control Z, control X, Y, V, you know, copy, paste, save, open, you know, like all that, anything that you find necessary. And I really like that they have like, basically they have eight um, 
larger buttons that are kind of like grouped in fours. So it has four and then two small buttons and then four larger buttons again. So the two smaller buttons I actually have set to just my brush settings. So I have the first button to toggle transparency so that I can easily erase the um, the marks that I made with the same, like, I don't know how to explain toggle transparency. You can probably search it up. Basically it makes like an eraser mode for your current pen that you're using. So pretend if you wanted to erase with the airbrush, you can do that with just toggling the transparency. Um, and then the second button, I used it to switch between my foreground and my background color because I often like to kind of keep one color and then kind of switch back and forth. Another thing you can change is the buttons on your pen itself. So I changed both buttons to be right click just because I've had it set to something else earlier. And sometimes when I accidentally press it, it does a different action, which I don't like. I like using the pen just for co like color picking, like the buttons on the pen for color picking. But in general, I'm not the type to use express keys, but if you're used to using express keys. I think 10 express keys is quite generous. So I'm quite happy about that. Um, I am more used to using the keyboard. Um, yeah. So as you can see, I think I talked about a little bit about the concept and everything about um, this Wanu illustration. So I won't go into it too much, but I like to say that I think this might be something I would like to continue to make more of in terms of illustrations. So currently I have a green and yellow-ish or like teal and orange uh, composition for another Wanu underwater piece. Just because like I think it'd be fun to have a kind of like a mini series going on again. And it will kind of help me improve digitally painting. So if you're interested in any of my brushes that I commonly use on paint tool side, you can just hop onto Instagram and I have a, what is it called? A highlight reel thing, a highlight thing on Instagram that has all my brush settings on there. And it's just screenshots of like all the brush settings and stuff. Hopefully you guys don't get too dizzy from me switching between the screen recording and then the webcam recording of my hand moving on the screen because the screen recording was like four hours, five hours, five hours of footage. I had to speed it up quite a bit, but I tried my best to um, switch between the two different kind of footage back and forth. So maybe you guys don't get too dizzy, but yeah, as you can see, I always like, as you can see, I usually hit the space bar quite a bit and rotate the screen. So I'm constantly moving and it's just a habit I have. I know it's not ideal for people who want to see what they're like, what you're doing, but yeah, if you prefer to see or not prefer to see, if you guys don't mind seeing more digital speed paints like this, I mean speed paints, I might in the future actually just hook up my mic to my laptop and have it where when I'm screen recording, I can also talk at the same time and we can do something similar to me doing real-time footage, I guess. And I can just splice up the footage so that it doesn't go into speed paint mode and you guys aren't watching at like times 64 speed. <laughs> um, but yeah, as you can see, the anti-glare actually really helps in terms of viewing the Galmon tablet when working on it, but as you can see, you can see like the light and reflection and stuff from other areas because the light's behind me. So sometimes it just seems like the screen is very pale because of the light that's surrounding me. Um, so in terms of comparing the PD1560 versus the PD1160, um, size is definitely different. So I, like I mentioned before, I definitely prefer the larger size just because it matches the screen size to my laptop. And I mentioned this before that I liked having it similar in size just because that's what I was used to seeing paint tool site on, um, and seeing it on the smaller screen, which was I think the 11.6, just made things look a little too crowded and my hand took up too much of the space. Um, this one is just a lot more comfortable for myself. Um, so also the pen is different. So the pen's shape as well as just the pen itself is quite different. So I didn't have the same issues with the nib kind of like really eating away from being rubbed on top of the tablet and stuff. So they might have a different nib material or maybe it's a different screen protector that's on this particular tablet. 
but I didn't see any wear on the nibs. Um, so also the shape of the tablet pen itself is just a little bit more ergonomic. It's still a bit thin compared to maybe like Wacom's, but it's definitely more ergonomic than the previous smaller version that they have. So one part that I was really worried about was the idea of recharging your tablet pen versus, you know, having a wireless tablet pen like the previous version that I reviewed had. And it's not too big of a deal, I don't think, because assumingly like the person told me that the pen itself, if like from one charge, one full charge, you should be able to use your pen for about a month. And for me, that's reassuring as well as you can use the pen while it's charging. So like you don't really have to stop working. It's a little bit annoying to like use the pen while the wire is like dangling from it, but it's like not the end of the world. Um, and then another thing was that um, this tablet does come with a stand. So I feel like that's more necessary, especially with a larger tablet like this because it's a little bit more hefty. Um, I think it makes sense that it came with a stand, which I really like. It's like really easy to adjust and there's multiple angles and it's like really easy to find an angle that's comfortable for yourself. So the previous version, which is the PD1160, uh, or no, 1161, didn't come with a stand. So I did have to buy a stand for it separately, but I feel like the smaller version for that tablet is actually meant to be a little bit more portable. So I feel like that's probably the reason why it doesn't come with a stand either. Um, Cause the stand itself is a little bulky and it doesn't really lay entirely flat. So it kind of makes sense. Um, let's see, anything else that was different? I did have a little bit of issues extending the screen, but that wasn't on Gaumon's part. It's kind of on Paint Tool Sai. So Paint, like, cause I tried on Photoshop and on Fire Alpaca and Medibang and Clip, um, like Clip Studio Paint, and they had no issues. This Paint Tool Sai had issues with me extending the screen. So my mouse would like hug the left side the entire time. So I decided that if I'm using the Gaumon or any other tablet and I need to extend the screen, I will just use it by duplicating the screen instead, which isn't the end of the world. It kind of helps my laptop anyways, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, in terms of painting process, because we're almost at the end, um, I treat it similar to how I done digital painting in the past where I basically do a sketch. I will duplicate the sketch after, I'll add the colors underneath of one of the sketches and I put that sketch on a multiply layer. I'll add any effects, any multiply layers, additional layers and stuff to create the mood and the lighting. And then I'll merge all those together. And then I'll hide that second sketch just in case if I botch this up. And then I basically just paint on the one layer. This is just how my brain works. And this is how I prefer to do it. As you can see, I decided to actually blur the seaweed that's in the front. So you'll see in me in the end that I'll duplicate the whole painting itself and I'll slowly select the seaweed and then erase everything around it so I could have the seaweed on a separate layer. And then I will take that into Medibang and in Medibang, they has the Gaussian blur in there. So I like to use that tool to create a little bit more depth by having the stuff in the foreground a little bit more blurry and kind of out of focus, which I kind of really like. And yeah, so I added more additional layers like luminosity layers and I guess like bubbles and stuff afterwards, just because I know it'd be final touches and I won't be moving them or I like I will be moving them afterwards. So I didn't want to put them all entirely on the same layer. So now you can see like I'm doing all the selecting and trying to my best to um, clean up any final things and I'm going to be adding effects like the bubbles addition to the um, Like stars and stuff. I just thought the stars were a cute touch. So the stars were actually from another um, Wanu painting that I did but I decided to make them look closer to star fragments that you find in Animal Crossing New Horizons. So yeah, I think that's probably about it I hope you guys enjoyed watching and listening to me kind of switch back and forth between talking a little bit about the painting process and then a little bit about 
my opinions on the Gaomon. I definitely recommend using Gaomon. I had no issues using it. It's a lovely experience and really easy to use. So yeah, check out all the links down below if you're interested in the any kind of Gaomon tablet. I believe that they have a few promos going on, but yeah. Yeah, just final effects and all that jazz. Bubbles, and that's about it, I think. Okay, so I forgot to actually sign off for this video, but I hope you guys enjoyed watching me draw on this tablet, the Gaomon PD1560. And yeah, it's just kind of showing you guys my painting process as well as showing off this really nice tablet. I actually really like the size of this. I think it's my ideal size for a drawing tablet that has like a screen. Um, the PD1161, I actually enjoyed using that one as well. And it was kind of like my introductory um, screen tablet. So I think this is a good kind of like upgrade. Um, I believe I'll talk about this all in the voiceover. So make sure to listen to the full length of the video. And I'm pretty sure you will if you got to the end part. I hope you guys had fun watching me do a digital painting in Paint Tool Sai. Because I think it's been a while and it's been almost a year since I've done the other Wanu underwater piece. But yeah, uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!